Now that we have the basic necessities covered on my tiny homestead, it's time to get to work on the solar. I mentioned this in the video, but let me emphasize this at the beginning here with a little disclaimer. This build is temporary and cost me under $200 in materials to build. I fully understand it's not strong enough to withstand extremely high winds or last for 10 years in the sun and rain. So if you're looking for inspiration for a permanent ground mount solar setup, this may not be the right video for you. While we start watching this footage, let me explain a few things. If you haven't watched my video series on getting started on my small homestead, let me give you the 10 second summary. I bought two acres of virgin forest, cleared out a narrow driveway, brought out a 40 foot shipping container for storage, and parked a 30 foot travel trailer in the center of the property. I'm currently using an inverter generator to power the trailer in the hottest part of the Texas summer, and it needs some help. So my biggest priority right now is getting all of the solar panels that I already own mounted and put into use ASAP. So I have a vision in my head of a ground mount setup that will work great for a year or two until I build a house and set up a more permanent ground mount. So I'll be using mostly untreated 2x4s for the construction to keep costs down and make this very easy to build. Obviously, if this were going to be a longer term structure, I would use other materials. Two other things worth mentioning on my design are that I want to be able to move this rack so it will have wheels to facilitate that and I want to be able to adjust the angle with the changing seasons. Once I begin construction on a house in the future, I'll need to be able to move this rack to allow for construction vehicles to access the property. So that's why it needs wheels. But it will be anchored to the ground with heavy duty spiral ground anchors. Again, this is what meets my needs for the next few years. So if you're building something permanent, you would make some different design choices. Anyway, let's catch up to the footage. My basic design is a 12 foot by 8 foot rack made from 2x4s that will pivot in the center to allow for adjustment of the angle relative to the sun. So I'll use heavy duty 4x4 posts in the center to support the rack and allow for rotation. At the ground level I'll have a frame of 2x4s and 2x6s that the wheels will mount to with support braces for the main 4x4 posts. Now I'm certainly no engineer but I've built enough contraptions out of wood to have a basic idea of what kind of forces this mount system will encounter. Obviously, it'll be pretty heavy, but the one I'm worried about is the wind. Solar panels are like sails when they're mounted like this on a pole or ground mount system, so I'm gonna do the best I can to brace this thing. But I'm sure there'll be things that I overlook or underestimate. So one of the benefits of working with wood and screws like this is it can be easily taken apart, adjusted, or added onto in the future as I see these weaknesses come up. You can see that I added some pieces of 4x4 here to the underside of the rack and secured it with eight long screws. This is a piece that will be bolted to the posts where the whole rack will pivot. I had to order the wheels so I didn't have them as I was building the support structure at the bottom. So I used some cinder blocks to build the whole thing on top of so I didn't have to try to lift it up later to mount the wheels. And I used some spare 2x4s to hold the 4x4 posts in place while I built the structure around them. With the posts in place, I cut them back from 8 feet tall to 5 feet so that the rack and panels would be easier to manage without a ladder. The extra height on a ground mount doesn't really help much anyway. Then I drilled some holes in the posts for the bolts to pass through. Unfortunately, around this time the memory card in my camera filled up and the battery died at about the same time so I didn't get footage of some of the final construction, including bolting the rack to the posts. Sorry about that. But here are some pictures of the progress to this point. After getting the camera sorted out and grabbing some flat free wheels off of Amazon, it was time to finish up the construction. So I drilled some 5 8 holes and bolted the wheels to the back corners of the frame. This will allow me to lift the front of the ground mount setup, with a helper of course, because it's pretty heavy at this point, and wheel the whole setup around a little bit if I need to. Next, I cut some 2x4s at 45 degree angles to brace the sides of the posts that support the rack itself. As I said, it's pretty heavy and will only get heavier as I add the panels, so those two posts are under some stress. And with the posts fully supported, I removed the temporary braces that I was using. The rack can now rotate the way I designed it to, so I can make adjustments throughout the year to get the optimal angle to the sun. 
But for now, I locked in the bottom of the rack at an approximate angle, and I'll get more scientific and accurate later after I install the panels. Okay, here's the finished DIY rack. You can see I've got it fairly flat for the summertime. So it's gonna be at a little bit better angle for, for solar than you know, putting it at 45 degrees or whatever to match the latitude, 42 degrees, whatever the latitude is. Uh, anyway, you can see the, the wheels we put on it. 10 inch wheels sounded a lot better, uh, bigger than they were in reality. They look puny on this thing, so I'll replace those at some point, but at least it'll give, give me a chance, you know, put, put one adult on both front corners. You can lift it up and move it around to pivot or, or move it around wherever we need it to go in the future as I start to build buildings and do things out here. And then there you can see the front, what it what it looks like. Uh, we put the, the braces on the sides to try to keep the poles. The poles aren't very well, uh, you know, they're not very well braced left to right. So they kind of want to wander a little bit. Now they're, it's pretty good. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use the, uh, I'm not showing it in this video, but I have the, the corkscrew or spiral anchors that I'm gonna anchor in the ground so that this thing, when if, if the wind picks up, it doesn't, you know, wanna shake itself to death or or uh, or do some fun shenanigans. So I'm gonna have I have four corkscrews. So I'm gonna, you know, kind of tie the structure um, with some some paracord or whatever I can find that's that's strong enough. But but anchor it to the ground and um, prevent it from kind of leaning left to right. Uh, it is going to add some weight when I add solar panels to this, so it may start to sag a little bit, but it's it's really, really strong. Uh, and as you saw in the previous part of the video, I can lift and, and readjust this with one hand, the top part. So I'm glad I, I used the point right in the middle as the pivot point so that it would be perfectly balanced and I can easily adjust it myself instead of having to get someone else to help me lift it and, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway guys, that's what it looks like. I know it's not beautiful, but again, I'm all about function over form. As you can see with the ugly tarps on my my trailer, I don't really care what it looks like. I mean, I do care, but I need to get it functional and, and working and, and operating properly before I start worrying about what, what can I do to make it look better. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you next time on the next episode where we put some panels on this thing. As always, please leave a like and a comment below. That really helps me out as I try to create content for you guys.